All right, guys, we're back for uh, another lesson. Um, Jesus is a superhero. Um, Jesus, the superhero. And so uh, last uh, last week we talked about how uh, uh, Jesus uh, walked across uh, walked across the lake. Um, he took care of the needs of uh, took care of the needs of his disciples, and how we're called to rest in him to, uh, for our needs. Um, how, uh, if you think about it, the, uh, it's amazing that with so little that Jesus could do so much that he could with five loaves and two fish that he could feed over 5,000 people. Right. And, um, Mark, Mark says, uh, they just didn't get the, the message of the, the loaves. Um, their hearts were, their hearts were hardened. They, they didn't understand it. They didn't, uh, they didn't comprehend what Jesus was trying to, to have them understand that, um, all of their needs will be met. Um, and he's been trying to get this message through, uh, from the very, be uh, from the, from pretty much our, our uh, the beginning of this lesson, um, this series at least, um, to rest in Him for their needs, and uh, we we can think back even to uh, when He uh, when He sent uh, sent them out. He says, "Look, don't take anything extra with you." Uh, basically saying, "God will provide for your needs." Um, and then uh, after that, we have um, we have the story of the the feeding of the five thousand. And then after that, we have the story of the um, <clears throat> Jesus walking across the lake and and uh, in the midst of their struggle, uh, giving them peace. And so um, they're not uh, the disciples just haven't uh, really grasped this this need for um, resting in Him for all their needs. Um, they, they still have this mentality that says, um, look, I can do it. Uh, and Jesus is like, look, you don't have to, you don't have to, I'm here with you. I'm here to take care of you. I'm here for you. Uh, so often in, in our, um, in our spiritual lives, we, we just feel like we just plow forward and Lord, I can do this. I can do this. I can. And he says, you don't have to. This isn't a religion of what you can do. This isn't a, 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 a situation where the more you do, the better you are. It's in our weakness and in our, um, in our lack that God shines so much and, and not just in, in our own life, uh, in our own lives, but in those around us, they, they see it more. Um, and so when the world sees us as broken, but somehow joyously living. They want to know why. Because he's taking care of our needs. He's taking care of us. He, he's, he's giving us the love and the hope and the grace and the mercy that we need. He's, he's being our bread. You know, when, when this kind of thing happens, it, uh, it'll bring people in by the droves uh, because people long for hope. They, they, they long for uh, something to hope in. And so we, we have this tendency to, to, uh, to hope in all kinds of things. We, uh, maybe we hope in, 
in uh, athletics and our athletic ability, um, in, in jobs or careers, in our earning ability, in uh, houses and boats and cars and, and cash and, and all these things. Uh, maybe we hope in relationships with, uh, with other people. We have this, we just put our hope here, 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 and we, and we, in our faith and we put it out there and it gets crushed over and over and, and, and we find ourselves who can we trust? Who can we really believe in? Who can we, who's never going to fail us? Scripture is resounding on that answer. Jesus, Jesus won't fail. God won't fail us. And so uh, we're called to put our faith in him. And so here in uh, Mark chapter six, uh, starting with verse uh, 53, we read, when they had crossed over, uh, when they crossed over, they landed at um, <clears throat> Geneset, uh, Geneseret and anchored there. So we see that um, they, they finish their journey and they, uh, they land and they anchor. It says, as soon as they got out of the boat, People recognized Jesus. Wait a minute. That's the guy everybody's been talking. That's the guy that fed the 5,000. That's the guy that, that he has been healing people. That's, that's him. That's Jesus. <laughs> um, and so it says they ran throughout that region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. So Jesus, Jesus starts to go, go around the region. He starts to walk a uh, journey around the region and um, people start, uh, they see him and they, they run to get their, their relatives and their friends and the people that they know that are sick. And they start to, to bring these people to Jesus to be healed and and he continues to travel around and says and wherever uh, wherever he went into villages towns or countryside they placed the sick in the marketplaces they begged him to let them even uh, touch even the edge of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. How amazing. Jesus goes into this region and he's just, hope floods the region. Hope floods the region. You know, in the, the last, uh, the last lesson was talking, talked about how we're supposed to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. How we're supposed to speak as though the, the words of God are coming out of our mouth. Uh, we're supposed to walk in the grace that Jesus walks in and walks with. And, and, and so there's just that question for me, like, is that? us like if i walk into a region do do i bring the hope of god with me i'm a christian so i i know the gospel i know the the message of of god i have that relationship with him i'm walking in his grace in that in that he has healed me from my, from my sins. He's wiped that away and I have that relationship with God now. That question. Does His grace flow through me? Out to the world. When they hear my voice, do they hear the voice of hope? When they see my face, when they interact with me, do they see something special in me? And I wonder if you ask yourself that same question, 
is the hope of Jesus seen in you? And I, and I don't mean like beating people with scripture. I mean, is the hope and grace of Jesus seen in you? If you, if you read through the, the four gospel accounts, what, what you'll see over and over and over again is that those who are beaten down by, uh, by the world, by even the, the religious elite of the day, find hope and peace in Jesus. And so we're not called to beat people down. We're called to, to lift them up, to love them, so that they know that the, the grace and mercy of God is with them. Do you know how healing that is? Just that. To know that God is with you. It can make you able to walk through so many difficult situations it has me and so we see in the, in the story it's a short story it's a but it's so powerful so powerful to to know that these people they just they just see Jesus or or hear that he's in the area and so they go and they they carry their friends on um, on mats Have you ever tried to carry somebody? So, so here's this: these folks going out and, and carrying their their uh, their friends and family long distances because they have that much faith that getting them there is that's just everything that they need. Jesus will heal them, no question. In fact, it goes so far as. It says they begged him to let them even uh, to touch even the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. You know, this, this uh, gives me some suspicion that um, word had gotten around about the, the woman that was bleeding. We talked about her uh, a few weeks back. Um, that had been bleeding for 12, uh, 12 years, and she she touched his uh, touched his cloak, and and he says power went throughout uh, went out from me. Where where who is it who who touched me? Right, this woman, and she was healed from that. It, it really makes me feel like her story has been getting around because they said all I've got to do is touch his cloak. Jesus, Jesus didn't have magic clothes. It wasn't his clothes. It was the one who was in the clothes. It was Jesus himself. And he said, look, you are so powerful. You are so, uh, so amazing that even if I can touch your cloak just let them touch your cloak just and they were they were healed Jesus met their needs and so we kind of get this uh, this comparison almost um, even the beginning of the story is uh, when when they had crossed over they landed and anchored there Mark is drawing a line to the last, the last story he just related. He says, look, right from the point that the disciples didn't get it, that their reliance on him, their faith in him for everything, they, they should just have faith in him for everything. They, they, they should just rest in him and then he jumps right to this story immediately. There you go, Mark. Immediately, he jumps to the story 
where people just see Jesus' face, they, they recognize him, or they, they hear that he's there, and bam, they're off to the races to go get their relatives. And so we have this kind of um, this comparison. You know, the disciples had been with him. Why didn't they just get it? Look, there are some of us who have walked for decades have walked with God. And some who still just don't get it. They don't get it. Why? Because like James said in James 1, it's through perseverance that we grow. It's through those hard times, those trials. Look, if we're always sailing on glassy seas, we're never going to understand that he's the master of the waves. If, if we're never hungry in a situation where it doesn't seem like our hunger is going to be, uh, could be possibly uh, satiated, that we could be fed in this situation and then how do we ever meet the one who can take five loaves and two fish and feed 5,000? If we don't go through the hard times, how is it possible for us to see and understand that there's one who will go through the hard times with us and who can bring joy and peace in those hard times and, and who can uh, make uh, who can even make those hard times go away we As we walk, we walk by faith. We walk with him. We walk and we, we see the glory and the grace of God. And we live it. And as we live it, and as we feel it, and as we're filled with it, we start to overflow. But if we never open ourselves to that, then we'll, if we never, if we never have a situation that, that calls for faith, then we'll never have a situation in where our faith is tested, we'll never persevere. And so that's why James says, count it all joy. You're growing in the Lord. Count it all joy. Rest in him and know that he is there with you. And if you lack wisdom, call out to him. And the same, uh, same thing with, uh, with this journey that we're, that we're, uh, going through with Jesus the super uh, Jesus the superhero it's the same thing people go through difficult situation after difficult situation after difficult situation scripture is clear that God doesn't always take those difficult situations away sometimes he does but we call out to him and we rest on him in knowing that either he'll take it away or he will be there with us through it. We don't have to bear it alone. We don't have to go through it alone. We're called to, to faith. And faith means that we put 
our hope in Him, that we rest on Him for our needs. As Jesus put it, He says, uh, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all this, all the stuff that you're chasing after, all the stuff that you really need, the food, the clothing, the, the daily stuff, That'll be added to you. But you focus on his kingdom. You don't focus on, on all the, uh, the minute little things that this world says you should chase after. You focus on the kingdom. We have faith. We call out to him and we bring our lives before him and we say, heal us. He is the great physician. He's the one who can and will heal us. is the lover of our soul. We are precious to him. And he, I genuinely believe that he longs for us to understand that he is here with us and for us. And that he has called us out into a world that needs hope, that needs peace, that needs love, a real love. Not a love that says, yeah, go ahead and do whatever you want. A love that is deeper than that. A love that cares for the person genuinely. He's there. In your church, the church is there with you too. Love to call you to, uh, to have you call, um, email, text, message, uh, however you feel comfortable getting uh, getting in touch. Um, I love to 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 talk with you to um, talk about maybe some difficult things if you need to talk through the, uh, some difficult things with faith or family or whatnot. Um, and, I, and I'd be happy to, um, to just chat. Sometimes you just need someone to talk to, to nothing in particular. Whatever it is, Just reach out. Reach out to the Father. Reach out to your community around you, your, your, your parents, me, the church. Um, we're glad to be here for you. Till next time.